Hello everyone, uh, I'm Dr. Deepti Behel and uh, I'm going to discuss today a clinical case of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome with you. Uh, let us see uh, how this uh, lady presented with the classic findings or uh, a classic presentation of ovarian hyperstimulation uh, syndrome. Uh, now she was a 31 year old female who presented uh, to me with nausea, vomiting uh, and abdominal pain. Uh, the significant findings during the physical examination were a tachycardia, heart rate of 115 and uh, yes, a tender abdomen uh, on examination. Uh, on taking the history, this is what was found out. Uh, she had a 2.5 year history of uh, primary infertility and she was attending an infertility clinic for the same. And uh, she had received three cycles of clomiphene citrate for ovulation induction and the current cycle was with of uh, uh, in vitro fertilization and there she was undergoing ovulation induction by gonadotropins. Now, uh, also on uh, asking further, she had undergone a uh, oocyte retrieval just a few days back and uh, uh, what do you think is the most likely diagnosis? So, this is a very classic presentation of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Now, if you uh, talk about the pic, uh, uh, presentations. Now, OHSS is one of the most severe complications of controlled uh, hyperstimulation of the ovary, right? So, it is the most severe complication of controlled ovarian stimulation. And uh, the cause of Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is primarily the injection HCG which these patients receive uh, prior to oocyte retrieval and the injection HCG which acts as a trigger is usually given about 36 hours prior to oocyte retrieval. So this is the main triggering event for ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome and what is seen is that once injection HCG is given the overstimulated ovaries they produce a lot of inflammatory mediators, right? And the primary inflammatory mediator involved with OHSS is VEGF, right? All these inflammatory mediators, including VEGF, they are absorbed into the circulation via the periovarian vasculature. There is also a lot of periovarian neovascularization, and through these vessels, these inflammatory mediators, primarily being uh, VEGF, are absorbed into the circulation. And what they do is cause a defective uh, capillaries. The capillaries begin to leak and there is a lot of collection which happens into the third space. Now, if you can see here, this is a classic picture of oocyte retrieval. What we can see are the large ovarian follicles which are because of the the size is large because of the stimulation which has been done by gonadotropins in this particular case and here what you see topmost a hyperechoic structure is the needle in one of the uh, uh, follicles uh, to retrieve the oocyte right so this is the procedure of oocyte retrieval and uh, as I said these patients receive injection HCG 36 hours prior to this oocyte retrieval Right, so this was a characteristic presentation of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome and uh, this is what is the appearance of the ovaries on ultrasonography. Right, now ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is divided into degrees. So there is a mild, moderate and severe degree which is dependent upon the size of the ovaries as well as the other findings. So when you talk about mild ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, it is characterized by bilateral enlargement of the ovary ovaries. They are going to measure up to 5 in by 5 centimeters, they are not larger than that. The patient would complain of abdominal distension and discomfort and the primary complaints are nausea, vomiting, yes some of them may even present with diarrhea. When you talk about grade 2 or moderate ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, the ovaries are fairly large, they may go up to uh, 12 by 12 centimeters. And now you would also have an ultrasound appearance, uh, ultrasound finding of ascitic fluid or ascites, right? Now, uh, 
this is again a, a classic picture of the ovary where you can see big follicles uh, in the ovary and what you see is the periovarian fluid right and this fluid is going to be rich in uh, inflammatory mediators and we said that the primary inflammatory mediator of the uh, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is the EGF. When we talk about the grade uh, 3 ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, it is severe. So, the ovaries are now going to uh, measure more than 12 by 12 centimeters. There is now a clinical evidence of intra-abdominal fluid collection and there may be further features suggestive of collection in the third spaces. For example, pleural effusions. Now, because of the excessive collection of fluid in the third space, there is a depletion of the intravascular volume which may predispose to disseminated intravascular coagulation, even thrombolic events in the, um, the severe most forms. There may be evidence of acute renal failure, ARDS and even shock. Right. So, this is uh, the most severe form. Now, when you talk about ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, what predisposes women to develop these complications of controlled ovarian hyperstimulation. So, the risk factors in which, which predispose the women are age less than 35 years of age, low BMI or thin women, women who are known cases of polycystic ovarian syndrome, rapidly increasing estradiol levels during the ovarian stimulation is one of the other risk factors and uh, especially levels more than 1500 have been associated with a very high risk of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. A history of OHSS in the previous uh, cycle is also a risk factor. Increased number of developing follicles, right? So, more the number of follicles in the ovary, more is the risk, right? As I said, HCG is one of the main trigger for ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. It is used for uh, trigger of ovulation in these uh, IVF cycles. Also, once the patient conceives or if she becomes pregnant, that itself is a risk factor. Why? Because not just the exogenous HCG now, now this lady starts producing the endogenous HCG, which again leads to severe forms of uh, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Also on the same concept, we divide ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome into early and late. When you say an early OHSS is one which happens within 8 days of oocyte retrieval right and late is if it happens more than or equal to 9 days after oocyte retrieval and as I said the cause of the late OHSS is endogenous HCG. Uh, so, this was about a typical presentation of a case of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome and uh, the risk factors along with etiopathogenesis. We would surely do another video where we would come up with the management uh, of uh, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Thank you.